There we go. Okay. All right. So Newton's second law goes like this. F net equals MA. All right. Now you might be asking me, what does net mean? What does that mean? Okay. It's like this. If Carly bought a, a whole bunch of hamburgers for 50 cents and then she sold them to everybody in her neighborhood in quarantine for $2, what is her net profit? $1.50. Okay, it works exactly the same way, okay? So now watch this when we talk about net force. It works just like what we were talking about right there. Now we're going to tie this in with the idea of force diagrams. And like I told you, I'll, I'll draw this up nice and neat and send it to you, okay? Now if this is like the ground and there was a box on the ground like this, Okay, let's say Carly is gonna push on this uh, crate or box or whatever it is with 200 Newtons of force. But then you know what? There's friction. Now watch, friction is gonna work backwards with 50 Newtons of force. Okay, so what would be the net force acting on this box now? 50. It's 150, that's right. Now watch this, this is where this is going. F net equals MA. So you would say 200 minus 50 equals mass. Let's go ahead and give this thing a mass just to make it easy to understand. Let's go ahead and say the mass is 150 kilograms. So right here we'd say 150 times A. Does everybody see what the acceleration rate would be? Say so it'd be 100, 250 or 200 minus 50 is 150. So 150 equals 150A. So the acceleration would be one meter per second squared. You see that? So we're keeping it easy so you can understand it right now here at the start. Now, you might be saying, Mr. Holly, there's got to be more forces than just this, though, okay? And there are, because there is like the force of weight. Addison, how do you calculate the force of weight? FW equals? Mg. Okay, so good. So look, the force of weight's acting downwards, right? Now the thing is, all of you guys right now have the force of weight acting on you, but none of you are going to the center of the earth. You're sitting in chairs or you're sitting on the floor so what's happening is the chair is pushing up just as hard as the earth is pulling you down. Now this force right here has a certain name. It's called the normal force. See, it's like this. And it works exactly in the opposite direction of the force of weight. Almost always this force is equal to this force because you're not going down to the center of the earth. You remember how I told you one time my brother sat down in his chair in his classroom? and the chair broke and then he fell on the floor and then Christian, I can't remember what Christian's last name was, but Christian Williams. was, what? Williams. I think it was Christian Williams. Yeah, he was filming it for some reason and, he, and then my brother made him stop film or record it, not record it, but erase it. See, but the, still, even still, even though the chair broke, the earth stopped my brother so that he didn't go to the center of the earth, okay? So almost always the force of weight is going to be balanced out by this normal force. Okay, do we understand this? Now this is called a force diagram. Okay, when you draw all the forces that are acting on something. A lot of times we draw blocks or something like that so that we can understand it. Okay, all right, let's go back to that original thing that we had right here. Okay. So now it says, what's going to happen if you double the mass? What's going to happen if you double the force? I think the easiest way to talk to you about this is to show you interactive physics. Now I have another computer here. It's that one that we borrowed from the IT people. Now the interactive physics program, it uh, is a little unstable sometimes. Okay, so it might break here and then we're going to have to remake this. But look right here. What we've got here is we've got this, this block. Okay, this block right here, 
it has a mass of 10 kilograms. Now this green thing right here is a force of 10 newtons. So I want you to think, F equals MA, if there's 10 newtons of force on 10 kilograms of mass, what's the acceleration rate gonna be? F equals MA. If 10 equals 10A, then A is gonna be one. That's right. Now also, you guys, what happens is, now that we're starting to learn this dynamic stuff, we're gonna tie it back into the kinematics again. Watch, we're gonna go up here and we're gonna measure position in the X graph. And then why don't we also measure velocity in the X graph here. Okay, so ready? Watch what's gonna happen. When we hit, and let's go ahead, and I think the tracking is on. Watch when we hit run. Yeah, see that right there? Here, look. So what happens is it's going faster and faster and faster. So it's going farther and farther and farther. So do you see the position right here? The position graph is exponential, you know, cause it's going farther at every moment of time. And right here, the velocity graph is linear. Let's keep looking at this some more. See how it goes? All right, now let me ask you a question though. Now again, I told you this program is like really, really sensitive. So I have to be really careful about how I do this or it'll shut down. Okay, I'm gonna double click on the force. No, on the force. Okay, now the force was 10. What if I make the force 20? What's gonna happen now? So the force is bigger. So what's gonna happen with the acceleration now? It will become less. If we put more force on it, the acceleration is gonna be less or more? Less. More. Okay, good. You're, we're having several different answers. Okay, so if you wrote it out, it would be like this. It'd be F equals MA. It would be 20 equals 10 times A. All right. So wouldn't it be 20 divided by 10 equals A? So what's 20 divided by 10? Come on, 20 divided by 10. Two. Two, thank you, all right. So now right up here, we should see two meters per second squared. Okay, so here we go, hit run. Okay, so we can see right up here, it says two. Look how much more it's accelerating now. All right, so let me ask you this. How many of you would like to have a sports car someday? I would love like a Corvette, a big old Corvette that's so fast. Hey, do they put real big engines in those Corvettes or do they put real small engines in those Corvettes? Big. Why do they put a big engine in a Corvette? It's a sports car because they want it to be able to... Go so fast. Uh -huh. They want it to accelerate to be able to go so fast, right? Now also, hey, about sports cars, you guys, are they really, really massive or are they not very massive? Not. Yeah, because see, the lower the mass, the more it can accelerate, okay? You guys, there's one time I talked to this one guy. He put a, a motor that was so big in a car and the car didn't weigh very much. And so he couldn't hardly keep the tires on the back end of the car because every time he would hit the gas, the tires would peel out and he would burn all his, tire, his tires up. The car was that fast, okay? So it's all about, this is all tied into Newton's second law, isn't it? All right, so let's go back here to where we can see me here. All right, good. So now we're gonna share my screen again. I'm gonna to talk to you about something I think is really pretty cool. Okay, it says right here, so if you go in a circular path, are you accelerating? And what does it feel like when you're accelerating? Okay, now I'm gonna share this with you today. And it's a little diagram right here. I might write it a little bit better for you. But you guys, you guys all made these little videos for me, you know, for the tablecloth jerk, and they were really good. There were some of them that were hilarious. I wish you could, I wish you could see uh, 
videos from other classes because I don't think you can. But it was really funny. Carly, not Carly, Kaylee, she had a blooper reel on hers and she actually put her sister on the tablecloth and tried to yank the tablecloth out from underneath her sister, which was pretty funny. She also did her dogs, all right, which kind of scared her dogs to death. But it was funny. Now, look, when you guys made these videos, almost all of you said, see, look, objects at rest want to stay at rest. And then you said, objects in motion want to stay in motion in a straight line unless another force acts on them, okay? So now what I want you to do is I want you to think about going in a circle. All right, if you go in a circular path, you have to accelerate. Because see, everything in, that's going wants to go in a straight line. So the only way not to make it go in a straight line is to accelerate it. Okay, the reason why this is true is because this, this is true because you're changing the direction of your velocity vector, okay? Remember that acceleration is the change in velocity over time. So you remember that movie, Vector? Hey, Robbie, what did Vector say? Vector is a, mag is a mathematical quantity with two things, both blank and blank. Uh, magnitude. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what's the second thing, everybody? Direction. Direction. That's right. So think about this. When you look at this right here, if an object's going in a circular path, isn't its direction always changing? So if its direction is changing, that means its velocity is changing. If the velocity is changing over time, it's accelerating. Because see, what would happen is it would want to go straight, but if you make it not go straight, you have to accelerate it and you have to put an unbalanced force on it. Now, one more thing. Hey, when we get you guys all back uh, and you know, you're all here. Let's say I put all of you guys in a school bus and then I started driving on a real tight turn, real, real tight in the donut. You know how all of you would get thrown to the outside, wouldn't you? Now, most people yeah. say that's centrifugal force, but we know centrifugal force doesn't exist. Really, all that is is it's inertia, right? Okay, so now I want you to think about this. You're being thrown to the outside. Whenever you feel the effects of inertia like this, you have to be accelerating, okay? This is a huge idea. This idea right here brought Albert Einstein to a whole law, okay? So now think about this. Whenever you're feeling the effects of inertia, you're accelerating. So have you been driving your car yet? Have you, did your mom or dad let you just be on your side street and just hit the gas all the way? Have you done it yet, Aaron? No? Peter, have you done it? None of you have done this? Okay, so like, if you're in a place where you know you can't hurt, get hurt. And if you just step on the gas, wouldn't you get thrown back like this? Okay, that's the effects of inertia, right? When you feel the effects of inertia, you're accelerating. Now this thing about Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein used this, this same little idea right here and he came up with the general theory of relativity, okay? And he won the Nobel Prize for it, just using this idea. So he took it another level, another step or two, and then there was a law of nature that he discovered. So this is an important idea. Okay, so you guys, we just talked right there about Newton's second law. There's one more thing that we wanted to talk about though with this. And this is right here. How could you calculate the amount of friction acting on an object? Okay, didn't we talk about Carly before? Let's go back to Carly. Okay, so you know right here where we talked about the fact that there was 50 Newtons of friction. What if we didn't know that? What if we just said that there was a force of friction here and we don't know what it is? Okay, so right here instead of 50, we're gonna put down a force of friction. Now, in this case, I would have to tell you, I would have to tell you what the acceleration rate was. You know, we said it was one when we calculated it. So if I just gave it to you as one, then we would go like this. We would say 200 
200 minus FF equals 150. And then to solve it, you would subtract 150 from both sides. My bad. You'd subtract 200 from both sides. So 150 minus 200, that would be negative force of friction equals negative 50. See, this is like a frictional force, 50 newtons going backwards. And so that's how you calculate that. Okay? We're, we'll get back to that more. All right, now let's talk about Newton's third law. Okay, you guys, Newton's third law is kind of interesting. Okay? How many of you guys have a brother or sister at home right now? Anybody have a brother and sister at home? Okay. All right. Did you know, now I don't want to cause strife in the family here, but did you know that you could go up and you could slug your brother or sister like this, just slug them in the, in the shoulder and you could say, hey, stop hitting me. In fact, my brother used to do this to me all the time. He would like hit me with my own hand when I was little. He'd always pick on me all the time. But if you, if you, go up and hit your brother or sister, you can legitimately say that they're actually hitting you, okay? Now, how can this happen? Okay, now let's look back here at this law. Newton's third law goes like this. For every action force on one object, there's an equal and opposite reaction force on another object. See, a lot of times I think you've learned this wrong, okay? You've learned before to say, for every action force and one, or you've learned for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's not complete enough. Okay, listen to it again. For every action force on one object, there's an equal and opposite reaction force on another object. How many objects do you have to have to have a force? Everybody. That's right, Peter, thanks. You have, you've got to have two objects or you cannot have a force. So it is really legitimate to say you can only hit something, listen, you can only hit something as hard as it can hit you back. All right? It is built into the fabric of the universe that this is true. You have to have two objects to have a force. Okay? So what this leads us to is this thing right here. This thing. Action, reaction, pairs. Now this is going to seem weird to you, but I promise it's true. All right, so... We all know that if you have the sun here and you have the earth here, we all know that the sun is pulling on the earth. Everybody all day long has said that that's true. So the sun is pulling on the earth. But this law, you know what this law says? It says if the sun is pulling on the earth, that means the earth is pulling back on the sun just as hard. All right, now, that might make sense to you, okay? But now, watch this. Let's say that, you know, I can have you do all these crazy things right now, like shooting rubber bands and stuff like this. What if I told you to go out and jump as high as you could outside, okay? So if I said, here, I want you to go outside and I want you to jump up in the air, all right? Well, I said, if I said, why did you come down? All of you would say, well, the reason I came down is because the earth is pulling me down. But what's the other half of this? See, now look, they're called, they're called action, reaction, pairs. Because there has to be two objects. So if the earth is pulling you down, what's the other half of this? It's pulling you up. Yeah. If the earth is pulling you down, you are pulling the earth up, okay? You're actually pulling the earth up just as hard as the earth is pulling you down. Okay, well, if this is true, how come you never see the earth move? Why does the earth not move? If you're pulling the earth up, how come you don't see the earth flying up and hitting you in the feet? It happens at the same time. It's happening at the same time. That's a good guess. Yeah, it's happening at the same time. If the earth is pulling you down and you're pulling the earth up, how, are, how do you and the earth compare to each oh, other? Oh, they cancel each other out, don't they? 
Okay, that's a good guess. That's a good guess. No, they don't. They're act, the forces they're acting on different objects, so they don't cancel each other out. It's a great guess, though. How do you compare to the Earth? You're smaller. Exactly. Okay. See, so the Earth has this gigantic mass, and your mass is really little. Okay. So you are pulling the Earth up some imperceptible small amount. But since you're so small, the Earth can pull you down and accelerate you. Have you ever heard that thing about, like, what if everybody in the Earth started running to the east all at the same time? Would we, like, speed up the Earth or slow it down? You really would. In some imperceptible small amount, you really would. Now, hey, let's watch this. What if we said, okay, let me see who's on this list here. Let's say, let's say Liana went ice skating, okay? So here's Liana. And she's going to go ice skating over there at the Ice Sports Wichita, even though it's closed right now. And she's going to push her hand back like this. And let's also say, now I'm not drawing this very carefully, okay? All right. Now let's also say Jace is there, okay? Now Jace is a lot bigger than Leon is, okay? I'm going to make him much, much larger here. There's Jace. Okay. Now look, Jace is going to push on Liana. Hey, how hard is Liana going to push back on Jace? Who's going to win when they push? It's kind of a trick. If Jace is going to push on Liana, Liana is going to push on Jace the exact same amount okay so they're going to push on each other the exact same amount now about this though you guys when we had this exact same amount right here you guys how are they going to move i know class is done the earth is pulling them i don't know okay now the earth would be pulling them down they're going to be moving would they not move sideways yeah. Would one of them move faster than the other? Liana's going to move faster than Jace. Exactly, because see, Liana doesn't have as much mass as Jace does, okay? So since her mass is less than his, what's going to happen is her velocity is going to be greater than his. Okay, do you understand that this is, a, have you ever shot a gun before? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now watch this, look at this. If this is a gun right here, now, I don't have much time to draw a gun right here, but here we go. If this is a gun, isn't this exactly how a gun works? So here's this bullet right here. So what happens is, how do I unclick this, you guys? There we go. Okay, not that. All right, so when the gun pushes on the bullet, doesn't the bullet push back on the gun just as hard? So if you've shot a gun, have you ever had a gun kick? Have you ever felt that? Okay, yeah, it kicks. In fact, if you shoot a shotgun, it actually hurts your shoulder a little bit. Okay, so now let me ask you this. What if they came up with this brand new gun? It was so cool. This brand new gun, the bullet is just as big as the gun. It's got a huge bullet in it. Would that be a good gun? Why would that be a bad gun? The bullet wouldn't go fast. The you bullet wouldn't slow. go that fast, but what about the gun? What would the gun do? Like fly, I don't know, like go crazy. Yeah, the gun, would the gun shoot back as fast as the bullet would shoot forward? Yeah. yeah. In fact, you can look up on YouTube sometimes, you guys. There is uh, videos of people shooting rifles that are like incredibly powerful. It's like nobody can hold on to them. It just kicks them straight over, okay? So those are some fun, funny videos. Okay, now look, class is over. Class is over now. And you guys realize you have two things you have to do, right? Okay, you got to make a qualitative video of the rubber band thing, okay? And you got to put that on Seesaw. And then you're going to make a quantitative graph from that experiment from this morning, okay? So look at the experiment 
and you're going to make a graph on the graph paper that I sent you in your email. And it should look something like this. Now, if you think you still need some help, I'm going to be hanging around for tutorial. Okay. And I'd be glad to help any of you and talk to you like kind of one-on-one -on -one about it. All right. Okay. All right. Maya, it's good to see you today. You what is the name of that thing? Is it snuggly or something? What is it? A comfy. A comfy. Yeah. Those look real warm. <laughs> are you guys, are you guys liking this schedule or are you hating it? I like it. I like it. I like, see, this is what it's like being in college. Okay. Yeah, it is good, isn't it? All right. You might never come back. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm going to have to take off. I'm going to reopen a tutorial session. Okay. All right. Be good. Bye-bye.